I have been playing Fallout New Vegas for many years now. I have played a lot of the vanilla game. I have played a lot of DLC, all the DLC. I have played a lot of mods. So there's a lot of companions that I think I could rank on a tier list. So that's what we're going to do now. I have some specific criteria for how I want to rank these characters. I value specific attributes in some characters that others may not enjoy. Uh, I think that tier lists are usually based on people's opinions. And my opinions are that uh, talkative companions are the best. Whereas companions that don't have a whole lot to say or anything meaningful to contribute to the story or the gameplay, they're not that great. They're not bad, but they're not that great. Now, this is not going to be comprehensive, of course, because if you look at the Nexus, you'll see that New Vegas has many, many, many possible moddable companions. But I feel like I've gotten the big name ones, the ones that most people know. I don't think I'm excluding too many of them. If you've heard of a, a popular companion, Hopefully they're going to be on this list. So a lot of these companions will start off at D rank. I'd say D rank is the basic rank. Meat shield you've seen right here. I've labeled it. Um, and they'll be able to ascend the ranks depending on how good they are. So let's start with, for example, Arcade Ganon. He definitely meets the basic requirements for being a meat shield. He is a basic companion. He does soak up bullets if you bring him with you. He fires back with his gun. He's got a perk, too. A lot of his companions have perks of varying degrees of usefulness. I don't think most perks are game-breakingly good or necessarily worthless. And even if they are worthless perks, the companions themselves can still have the basic functionality of a companion. He's also got quite a lot to talk about. You know, you take him to various places and he's got his opinion. He'll tell you about things. He'll tell you what he feels about Westside and he, he has things to say. And if you blow up Archimedes, if you use Archimedes to blow some things up, he'll be indignant. He's got to talk about. And people talk about him. You bring him around and people say, hey, who's that guy? You know, the world reacts to him and he reacts to the world. That interactivity, that uh, constantly having new things to say, I appreciate that. I think he's good. And how about his personal quest? I think he's got a pretty good personal quest. If a companion has a great personal quest, it makes the companion themselves more endearing. So I definitely will give somebody an additional rank, an additional point on this tier ranking, if they've got a good quest. And I think Arcade Ganon's got a pretty good quest. You get to meet the Enclave Remnants, and you get to interact with them, and depending on how you interact with them and how you deal with this quest, there's a one or two different ways it could resolve. It's pretty decent. And I think he would also get an additional point for having relevance to the story. The Enclave themselves might not be important to... Fallout New Vegas's story or Fallout New Vegas's overall themes or anything. But the Enclave is a Fallout faction. It's got some relevance to the franchise as a whole. And it's nice to see the Enclave remnants being showcased in a light that's not completely got awful. You've only seen the Enclave in Fallout 2 and Fallout 3 as generic bad guys. And there's not a whole lot of moral ambiguity or gray area with them. So this adds a bit of nuance. So this quest is good. I, I think Arcade Ganon has got a good quest. He's got a lot to say. He's got a significant amount of relevance to the story of Fallout as a whole. I'd say he's A tier. I have a good time when I'm traveling with Arcade. I think Arcade Ganon has a good voice actor too. You know, he's, he's got a lot to say. I like traveling with him. I think he's great. You say his character felt like what was supposed to be a send off to the faction. Yeah, possibly. If that was indeed the last we ever heard of the Enclave, that wouldn't have been a bad note to end on. Of course, I don't think he quite makes it into the S tier list for, you know, he doesn't do anything super exceptional. You'll, you'll eventually get tired. He doesn't have that many barks to say. The Enclave isn't that significant. He's solid. He's, he's a good choice for a companion. But I can't really see myself doing, for example, an Enclave run and him being mandatory. Yeah, he's nice to have. He's good. He's chatty. He's got a lot going for him, but he's not... Super amazing. You say his perk is forgettable? Honestly, most people's perks are forgettable. Um, I say the only people whose perks are notable are maybe uh, Rex and Boone, because they are actually quite useful perks. Everyone else's is kind of handy. You know, Veronica's is not. Veronica's probably got the worst perk of the Vanilla Companions. But I don't really grade them too highly based on their perks. I... I grade them based on how much I like them as a character. I will take somebody with me, even if they've got an awful perk. And if someone's got a great perk, but a terrible personality, then I'll probably 
not bring them. Probably leave them behind. Make them F-tier or D-tier. So, other companions from the vanilla game. Uh, Boone. Boone is another great vanilla companion. He definitely meets the requirements for Meat Shield. He's got a good loyalty quest. Two, actually. Two loyalty quests. One to recruit him, and then his loyalty quest at uh, Bitter Springs. He's got a lot of plot relevance. He's a pretty good NCR companion. He shows off the nuances of the NCR campaign. He doesn't have a whole lot to say, but I also don't have a whole lot to complain about. Uh, he's great. He's got a really good companion perk, being able to spot enemies off at of the distance. One of the few companion perks I actually think has some weight. Yeah, I'd say he's definitely A tier as well. And I do like his beret, yeah. Punk Raider, you think that Boone should be S tier, but I disagree. I think while he is a great NCR companion, and he can fit in other runs, I don't think that you would miss him too much if you did an NCR run without him. I don't think he's essential to the storyline or the NCR quest line. You know, you, you see his story, and that's okay. And I agree, Heronary. Personality-wise, he is almost like a robot. He doesn't have a whole lot of voice lines. He's got some, but not a whole lot. There's, there's also the, the, the fact that he can kill Legion soldiers without giving you a chance to talk to him if you're trying to resolve things for the NCR in a peaceful manner. Like, if you're trying to do an NCR relatively pacifist run or something like that, Boone's going to make that difficult to you because you, you can't negotiate with the, the people that he blows their heads off. Not that I'm certain you can talk to a lot of Legionaries without uh, killing them, but if there were options, and I, I think there are at least a few, like uh, yeah, the Dead Sea, I think, is an option... But not if you got Boone with you. Definitely not. I think a lot of people have a good opinion on Boone because he's the first companion they can recruit. You know, Cass is the first one you meet, but she's got some requirements. But you stumble upon Boone and you do his quest, and it's pretty simple to do his quest. Even if you mess his quest up, if you got some basic speech, he'll give it to you. He'll join you. So Boone and Veronica are the, the companions you meet early on, so they're basically the companions people tend to think of when they think of New Vegas companions. Speaking of, Veronica, another great companion, more than a meat shield. She's got a lot of relevance to the, the Brotherhood of Steel, which is definitely relevant to the Fallout franchise as a whole. She's got a lot to say. You take her to various places, and that's actually one of the requirements for her personal quest, is to take her to various places, and she will tell you her opinion on them. So that's very nice to have. And her quest is actually really well designed. Tell me if you thought about this. Veronica excels at melee combat. And there's not a whole lot of opportunities for melee combat to be shown off because there's not a lot of dungeons. Only The only dungeons in Fallout New Vegas are the vaults. And where do you go for Veronica's quest? Well, one of three locations, each of which is a vault, pretty much. Or at least a dungeon. The Sun Tower... That's north of Novak is an option as well. But those are all kind of dungeony areas. And that's where Veronica excels. Where you can see Veronica doing her best is in tight, close indoor quarters where she can go around a corner and punch somebody's head off. Like, that showcases her in a great light. Again, another great companion. And probably the best unarmed companion you'll have in the game. You say the ending of her personal quest is pretty unsatisfying, even if the journey is nice. Well, yeah... It's an interesting idea to explore, absolutely. The concept of sticking with a faction that you know is kind of doomed because they make bad decisions or abandoning them. And no matter which option you choose, it's always a little bitter. You stick with the faction that you know is going to die and you've kind of sealed your fate to them. Or you try to abandon them and they kill the people you try to align with. It's, it's just not great. It just doesn't feel good at the end. It's a very somber and kind of sad loyalty quest, but that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes these things are just sad. That's life. And one more companion from the vanilla game I think is fit for A tier would be Cass. Cass actually has a lot going for her. Compared to, compared to these other vanilla companions, I think she's comparable. I would say that I don't think her loyalty quest is that great. You go to three caravans and you learn that there were some shady individuals... So you either have to kill those two folks or steal a piece of paper from them. And that's kind of it. Kind of kind of weak compared to the other three. Her loyalty quest is not that great. I also do not think that she's tied into the main story the way the other characters are. Ganon's linked to the Enclave. Boone is linked to the NCR. Veronica, the Brotherhood. Cass is kind of linked to the NCR. Not really. It's a, it's a lot more loose. 
She's got some history compared to the others. She's got the history with uh, Cassidy from Fallout 2, I believe. Bit of lore there. So there are some things that do cause me to want to put her into B tier. But I think she stays in A tier because she has a lot to say. From my understanding, the game was patched so that she would say less because she was talking quite so frequently. But you can mod the game to undo that, and she will be quite the chatty Cathy. She has probably the most to say out of all the vanilla companions. And for that, I will definitely put her in A tier because I do like it when my companions have interesting things to say. I do not see that as a detriment, and I don't think that that needs to be corrected. I think... Cass should be allowed to speak her mind. Can she out-talk Hope? We're not getting into the, the modded companions just yet. And she does have a lot of fun voice lines too. Yes, they will make you laugh. She thinks being gay means you got a legion view on those things brings her down for you though. Eh, she, she might not have the best views. She might not be perfect, but I like flawed characters. We've seen, for example, with Starfield being the most recent one, sometimes all the characters that you meet, all the companions you recruit are... Too goody-goody, not rough enough around the edges. They're kind of bland and forgettable. She is a bit rough, all right. She, she's got some jagged spikes. You got to watch out for her. That gives her some character. Raul! I think Raul goes in B tier because he's got a lot going for him. He would make it into A tier because, I mean, he's an interesting character. A pre-war ghoul that's voiced by Danny Trejo. Like, great voice acting, pretty good backstory, not super tied into the story of uh, Fallout, kind of like Cass, but that's not the worst thing in the world. I do believe he goes into B tier, though, simply because his loyalty quest is, well, depending on how you look at it, his, his loyalty quest is either bad or non-existent, because what I would consider his loyalty quest to be is just going to a location and hearing his opinion and then he tells you a bit of a story. That's not really a quest, though. That's that's something that I like, of course. I like it when companions talk about the world, and you meet a character, and Raul says, hey, what do you think about that guy? You know, it, it's, it's nice that he interacts with the world, and the world interacts with him, but the quest just isn't good. You go to three locations, and you get a lore dump. It's very bland and not very interactive, and it does more to tell rather than show. And of course, it's a little more difficult to find Raul. He's tucked away at uh, Big Mountain and he's behind a locked door. So eventually you will meet Raul, but by the, by the time you finally get to him, who knows how you'll feel about the game, as opposed to someone like Arcade or Veronica, where you do spend a lot of time with them pretty early on, or at least you have the opportunity to. How has the stream been? It's been going well. Thank you. Hope yours is going well too, Chaos. Death a meat shield for me. <laughs> a meat shield for you. He's got a pretty good perk, too. You know, the uh, maintenance perk isn't bad. As long as you don't give him that upgrade where he loses it. You know, he's got some uh, some good things to him. But, yeah, I, I can't see him going into A tier unless he had a better quest. You think Raul is voiced by Danny Trejo and that alone should increase him by one more rank? I feel like I'm already being pretty generous putting him into B tier. Because it's not like he's got a whole lot of relevance to the story, either. Again, Boone's NCR, Veronica's Brotherhood, Raul's... You can kind of argue that he's the closest thing you have to a Legion companion. It would be bumped up if you were a Danny Trejo fan. I enjoy traveling with Raul, and I, I do like hearing what he has to say. But yeah, his lack of relevance to the story and his terrible loyalty quest just kind of hold him back from being A tier for me. Lily! So Lily is kind of a meat shield. I know it's mean to say, but yeah, there's, she's not very well developed. I think that she's got a great concept, though. Schizophrenic Nightkin. Schizophrenic Nightkin that jumps in between personalities. She's actually got a pretty good perk. You know, she's uh, she helps out if you're playing as a stealth character. And normally, if there's a character that gives you a stealth perk, you go, Oh, great, I'm a stealth character. I'll recruit that character and never bring the character with me because they'll, they'll hinder my stealth. But... Because she can go invisible, it actually works out well. She's a good stealth companion character. If you're trying to go for stealth, well, not that there's a whole lot of opportunities to be a stealth character in New Vegas, but if you do, Lily is a good companion for you. So she's great concept-wise. She's got a bit of flavor. Uh, she ties into the Master. Like, I, I think she steps out of Meat Shield into C-tier. 
She's better than a meat shield. She's got some interesting things to say. And the world itself reacts to her. They go, whoa, is that a super mutant? What the? Yeah, so there is a bit more to Lily that gets her out of meat shield territory. But there's also a lot holding her back. So we got, uh, this is Rex. We got Rex here. So Rex is, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting character. I think Rex is interesting. Uh, it's a robot dog. That's pretty cool. But unfortunately, Rex doesn't have a whole lot to say, being a dog. Other characters do talk about Rex and interact with you like you've got the dog, but he doesn't say a whole lot. And if a character doesn't speak, I'm not going to rank him very highly. He is a good boy, and the fact that you can bring him with other characters in the vanilla game is useful, of course. Unless you're playing a modded version like I am, where you can recruit as many characters as you want. I think he does step out of Meat Shield territory. But how far does he go? I think only C, though. I don't think his quest is all that good. The concept of exploring a robotic dog could be interesting, but the quest doesn't really work very well because you're looking for a different brain to replace his brain, but then the brains kind of combined. It's a little muddled. The theming is a bit muddled. And again, not really tied into any relevant factions in the series or the game. You do pick him up early, of course. You pick up Rex... Well, not super early, but a lot of people do have fine memories of traveling with... Rex and Boone or Rex and Veronica. You get Rex and Veronica. You get two melee characters going tag team. It's pretty fun. But I don't think I'm going to rank Rex higher than a C because I just don't think there's enough going on. Again, if a character doesn't have anything to say, I don't really feel the need to rank them very highly. And that's personal preference. I know a lot of people prefer silent companions. The quieter, the better. I think Zach might agree with that sentiment. For those people, I think Rex would be rated higher. But personally, no, I, I think Rex goes to C, and that's just it for me. So here we got Edie, Eddie, Eddie, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Uh, Eddie's kind of a meat shield for the most part. You get him, and there's not a whole lot to him, not really any relevance to any major factions. The loyalty quest isn't really a thing. You basically just get one of two upgrades, and that's it. I'd say vanilla game, Eddie is meat shield territory for me. Not even a really unique concept, because you had a robot in uh, Fallout 3, too. So, not a, not a whole lot that intrigues me about Eddie. But I will say that the Lonesome Road DLC did flesh out, ironically, Eddie a little bit more. Gave Eddie a little bit more of a personality. If you don't have Lonesome Road, I'd say Eddie's Meat Shield territory. But with Lonesome Road, you got a bit more character. It's kind of like a little bit of a loyalty quest, you know, a little bit of... Eddie has a lot more to say, and a lot of it is told through beeps and boops, so I am going to penalize you for that. One thing that I did enjoy about Eddie in The Lonesome Road is that sometimes Eddie would occasionally communicate to you with clips from a TV show, like, go, Eddie, fly far and fast, you know, that, that bark that he played sometimes. He would just play clips from the old TV show, and I think that would have been a great way for the character to communicate with the player is if the character just started regurgitating TV show quotes, because then it wouldn't just be beeps and boops. It would actually be a conversation. Granted, the conversation would be in multiple different voices, because Eddie is ripping these voice lines from different TV shows, but that would have been a lot more interesting. But unfortunately, the concept doesn't go that far, and uh, yeah, I'd say Lonesome Road, Eddie is not awful, but yeah, C-tier. Same thing with Rex, really. And that's it for the vanilla companions. Uh, so Fallout 3's companions, I lumped into one category because they're basically all meat shield territory. And I am including them on the list because you can install Tale of Two Wastelands and uh, bring Fallout 3 characters with you, I think. So Fallout 3 characters don't have a whole lot going on for them. They don't really have a whole lot of relevance to the story or the bigger picture. You've got, for example, Clover, who is just the slave, or Butch, who's got a bit more development, but... Kind of forgettable. None of them have loyalty quests, and most of them have karma requirements, which I do not care for. I think the only companion I can see getting out of Meat Shield territory would be Fox. Because a lot of players do have fond memories of Fox, and a lot of people do spend a lot of time with Fox. Much in the same way that people are endeared to Boone and Veronica, people are endeared to Fox because they do spend some time with him. And he's got a bit more charisma and a bit more relevance to the main story and you can use his ability with the add-on installed to not die which is handy so i would say fox is the only one who would have the potential to get out of meat shield territory but as a whole 
they're all kind of forgettable. And that's also where I'm going to put Fallout New California's companions. I don't think that's too controversial. I think a lot of them are pretty meat shield territory. Some of them are pretty insufferable, like uh, the purple-haired girl that uh, really gets under your skin with that sudden personality shift. So she might even have the potential of being dropped down to F tier for being so obnoxious. But uh, even the mod authors themselves talked about how the companions were slated for an overhaul early on in development, or at, le at least early on in the initial release or rework, because they just weren't satisfied. They've got some nice voice acting, but not a whole lot to say, and not really tied into the overall story either. You started playing New California recently. It's kind of annoying how you can't stop and talk to them casually after they become followers. Yep. After you leave the vault, they cease having hardly any development. If you get captured by raiders, there's a side quest to rescue them. And occasionally they have a, a thing to say, but not often, unfortunately. I forgot about the DLC companions. Definitely want to put them on the board right now. So the first DLC is Honest Hearts, I believe. So we got uh, this guy. And uh, where's the other girl? Um, waxes with poetry. There, there she goes. She goes, there you go. Um, yeah, they're, they're meat shield territory. They're, um, I don't even remember their names. I think they could have had potential to be good. This guy in particular, I can't remember his name, but I believe you do his quest and he wants to go travel the world. And you think that's great. I can bring him back to the Mojave, show him the world. But no, he, you, you can't bring him back to the Mojave or show him the world. It, yeah, I don't really remember much about these characters. Maybe I'm ranking them too low, but they did not stand out for me. And uh, I don't I don't think you need them to play Honest Hearts. If you want to play Honest Hearts, you can travel without them. They don't really add anything to the experience. This guy in particular is almost worthy of F tier just because of how many games he's ruined. You know, you, you go into Honest Hearts and you see this guy and you think he's an enemy because you he, he just heard some gunfire. So you shoot at him and then you shoot at him and you fail the entire DLC. You fail the entire DLC. Like, you're lucky you're not an F tier for that, buddy. That's pretty bad. There's also Joshua Graham, who is a great character, like S tier character. Really, really well done, great uh, great uh, voice acting and everything. You technically have him as a follower for a one mission at the very end, but beyond that, not really. There is a mod you can download that uh, would allow you to bring him with you wherever you want, make him an actual fully-fledged companion. And mods that do that are kind of forgettable to me. Like, yeah, you can recruit these vanilla characters. You can bring Sunny Smiles out of Good Springs. You can bring this character out of the city they were in. But they're not going to have new voice lines. Like, Sunny Smiles isn't going to be able to comment on the boomers or the Gamora. She just doesn't have voice lines for it. So almost every single character of that ilk is going to be in Meat Shield territory. I will say, though, that Joshua Graham does get to escape for being such an awesome character. And if you think about it, Honest Hearts DLC is basically Joshua Graham's loyalty quest. Like, it's it's kind of his loyalty quest, if you think about it. <laughs> Bring him to Kaiser's tent. See what he's got to say. Exactly. I would have loved to do that. I would have loved it if he were an actual companion you could bring back to the Mojave and see what he had to say about the various things. That would definitely put him up to A tier, maybe even S tier, but no. I'd say he's he's good. Like, you do his quest in Honest Hearts, and you hear about the potential of making him a companion with a mod, and you do that, and you realize that you didn't really have to do that because he doesn't really add a whole lot to the experience because he's got nothing new to say. You can just leave him in... Honest hearts. Leave him in Zion. It's fine. Next up is Deceased Cash. Yes. Dead Money. So the three characters from Dead Money. We got uh, this girl and this mutant and this mutant. So I think they're pretty good characters. Like, much like how Honest Hearts is Joshua Graham's loyalty quest, Dead Money is kind of these three characters' loyalty quest. Also, you know, Elijah is there too. But so much of the mod revolves around these three characters. You, you spend a... You spend three quests recruiting them, and then you spend three quests getting them set up, and then you spend three quests trying to not get killed by them. Like, it's basically their loyalty quest. Uh, I think Dog slash God is as interesting as Lily, but way better, because they actually did something with it. Like, uh, I want to talk to Dog and God a lot and hear what they have to say. And his perk is very useful. All three of these characters have very useful perks when you're in Dead Money, because uh, Dead Money kind of sucks, and they make it suck less. 
Dog slash God will kill the unkillable enemies. Dean keeps the cloud off you. And uh, this girl stops you from blowing up from the radios. So, yeah, that's awesome. Great perks. Or maybe it's a bad dead money design. <laughs> However you want to look at it, they got some great great utility there. Um, yeah, I'd say they're all maybe B tier. I'd say they're all roughly in B tier. But, again, I when a character isn't voiced and they don't have a whole lot to say, it drops them down a rank for me. I don't have a thing against mute characters. I think mute characters in video games can be done well. I don't think Christine is, though. I think if you're going to take away a character's primary method of communication, i.e. don't let them have a voice, you got to replace it with something. Let them have some new animation so you can see them pantomiming. Or I tried to give them a robotic voice, but that didn't go over very well with the community. But you got to give them something. You, you, you got to give them something. And, wh and when she does get her voice, when Christine does get her voice... It's a nice voice. It sounds good. But until then, I'm, I'm just not a fan of having to read in the text box what she's doing. So I, I think she loses a rank for that. I think they're all well-done characters. I think they're fitting for dead money. I wouldn't want to take them out of dead money unless they had more things to say. Dean Domino is unique for having the, the ability to penalize you. It gives you the bad ending, or I guess his bad ending. If you pass too many skill checks, which is kind of unique, but also kind of a dick move. Like, if New Vegas has been conditioning you to always pass a skill check if you have the ability to, and then it starts punishing you, yeah, it's a subversion, but it's also kind of a dick move. I'd say it's B tier, though. To be fair, Dean himself is a dick. Yeah, it's in character, all right. Christine is Veronica's first love. You say that needed work. Yeah, it would, it would be nice if that character relationship was expanded upon in any way. I don't think it was. You can't even bring it up to Christine, only Elijah. Yeah, yeah. Yup. So the next DLC is Old World Blues, and there's one companion in Old World Blues, and that's Roxy. Roxy is F tier. I think that's the only character that's going to make it into F tier because, well, let's look at all the things that's wrong with Roxy. It's basically Rex, you know, so that's not a new concept. You got a robot dog. Uh, no companion wheel, you can't really interact with them, can't even carry your burdens, and the worst thing of all is you can't even bring her with you to leave the facility in which you make her. She's stuck in that building. So she's not even meat shield tier because you can't bring her with you to shield you. She, she, she can only be in that building. Now, if you've got mods on, of course, then she could probably bounce out of that tier. You need mods to make Roxy meat shield tier. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. And she can die. Yeah, that's true. She is a worse Rex locked behind a puzzle that you can't bring with you and has no relevance to the story. It's nice that she has an ending where she gets to make puppies with Rex, even if Rex is dead, which is a little weird. Like, if Rex is dead, if you're playing on a hardcore mode and Rex is dead in your vanilla game and you do the Old World Blues DLC with Roxy alive, apparently Roxy, in heat, goes to Vegas, finds Rex's corpse, brings it back to Old World Blues, resurrects him so she can have poppies with him, which is a bit weird. Roxy is not even a companion, just a novelty. Yep, that's fair. That's a fair assessment. And finally, Lonesome Road. Lonesome Road does not have any companions, although if you have uh, mods, you can uh, make Ulysses a companion, you know? So you can make him a companion with mods. He's a great character. Honest Hearts is Joshua Graham's loyalty quest. Lonesome Road is Ulysses' loyalty quest, if you think about it. They're both well-voiced. It would have been nice if he was in the vanilla game like was originally intended. I think Ulysses is basically... He was the planned Legion companion that didn't actually get to make the cut due to the time constraints. So it's a shame we lost out on bringing, being able to bring him into the main game and have him say things about the world, have a proper Legion companion. But if you're doing a Legion run, you might as well install a mod and bring him with you. He won't have anything new to say. You could just leave him in Lonesome Road. It's fine. You can go visit him and talk to him. That's also an option. You don't have to make him a companion, but if you do, like... Thematically, it's probably one of the best options for a Legion Companion. There's not a whole lot of options, so... Yeah, C-tier. 
Why would anyone make Ulysses a companion? He's a verbose dick. Well, he's a verbose dick in the DLC, but if you make him a companion, you know, he's basically just a meat shield companion that you can pick his brain. He's not going to say a whole lot about the world because he wasn't programmed to. He stops talking, essentially. Get the push mod and push him over the ledge in the divide. All right, so that's all the DLC characters. Speaking of Ulysses and uh, Joshua Graham here, you can also make... Yes Man a Companion with Mods, and Mr. House a Companion with Mods. Most mods that make a vanilla character your companion are Meat Shield territory. There's nothing to, nothing to call home about, nothing crazy about them. I will, however, give them a bonus point for the sheer utility of being able to bring Mr. House and Yes Man with you if you're doing a Mr. House or Yes Man run. If you're trying to do a Mr. House run of New Vegas, but you don't have Mr. House as a companion following you, then every time you do one of his quests, you got to go back to the strip, then back in Lucky 38, then back up the elevator, and then talk to him, then go back down, go through all those loading zones. It's kind of a hassle, so being able to bring him with you saves a lot of time. So I will say for that, specifically, specifically that, you know, you're decent enough characters, but uh, yeah, you would normally be in Meat Shield territory, but because they help you through the main quest line saving you some time being very useful in that regard i'd say they get bumped up to c tier we'll piss. so yeah again this is the standard by which i mean like you think about having uh, a legion companion you think oh maybe i can make volpes you can make volpes uh, a companion with mods y and yeah you can if you do his quest that he gives you to go talk to whatever her name is maria then with a mod on you can have him follow you but he doesn't really add anything to the story, and he's got kind of generic dialogue, and he's basically just a meat shield. So that, that's kind of what I'm thinking of when I think of making vanilla characters your companion. Kind of just, yeah, you can. You can turn them into a meat shield if you want to. Betty the Brahmin is a cut character that could be reinstalled with mods. Uh, she can carry a lot of stuff with you. The mod that I played also made it so that whenever you went indoors, she didn't follow you, which was handy. She's not great in combat, obviously, but she's got the utility of being able to carry a bunch of stuff with you, which might be handy if you're playing on a harder difficulty, maybe on a hardcore difficulty, where you can't bring all the guns you want all the time. But also, if you're playing on hardcore difficulty, you might be worried about Betsy dying. So yeah, it, it's hard to think of a situation where you'd want to have Brahma, the, the Brahmin with you, especially because the, the constant Brahmin noises will definitely get annoying. The mooing and the, the, the ringing of the bells and the clutter and everything. She's got her purpose. She's kind of unique, of course, but I can't really place her very high because you know, once you get past the novelty of it, there's no reason to really bring her with you a whole lot of places. And I did not put all of the Frontier Companions into one group like with Fallout 3 and New California because I do think their quality varies wildly. So um, this girl, whose name... I forget because it actually had a couple different iterations and I forget what it is in the script, but uh, she's basically a meat shield. You unlock her after you've beaten one or two of the campaigns. Angel's Justice, that's right, that's her name. Yeah, yeah, her. So you only unlock her after you've beaten the frontier. So why? <laughs> she, she's got some plot relevance being part of the NCR Exiles, but like as a character, she's better. As a companion, why bother? So this guy, the mercenary, um, what's his name? Starts with a D, I think. Donovan, yeah. Donovan is pretty well done. He's kind of a cliche archetype of a character. He's, uh, he's a grizzled mercenary, kind of bitter about things. Got a great voice, though. And the quest that he, that, uh, he has, Zach and I really enjoyed. Like, when we got to the end of his quest, Zach and I were, like, we, we weren't sure what the best ending for Donovan would be. So that was, it was a bit unclear. Uh, he has some things to say about the Frontier, but not a whole lot. He's solid, I think. He's a, a solid addition. If you're going to be traveling to the Frontier, you can go to the bar, you pick him up pretty easily. I think you got to pay him a couple caps, and that's it. And yeah, He's a solid companion for if you're traveling around the Frontier. Not a ton of meat to him, but what's there is good. Excellently said. Thank you, Dibia. Thank you very much. He's a better Jericho? Agreed. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, Jolene, I believe her name is. Jolene is, uh, she's okay, but she doesn't really have a whole lot going for her. She's not quite meat shield material. She does have kind of a recruitment quest. She's got a little bit of stuff to say. And she did make us laugh a couple times, but 
she doesn't really have any overall significance to the rest of the story or any of the factions. I feel like they could have done more. In fact, she's she might even be meat shield territory because they just they did not really do a whole lot with her. She's got her recruitment quest, and I think there may have been one more quest where she may have had a little bit more relevance. But she doesn't say a whole lot, and there's just not really much to her. She got one or two chuckles out of us, but beyond that, she was not very well developed, I will say. Well voiced, but not well developed. She's better than AJ. Yeah, I will say that she's better than AJ. I'll, I'll put her in C territory. As a companion, yeah. Yeah. She's good. She's not as great a character as these, but she's definitely a solid companion. If you're traveling around the frontier and you pick up Jolene, you're not going to regret it. You're going to have a decent amount of time with her. She'll occasionally say something about the world or make you laugh. It's okay. Looking at this, you realize that we haven't gotten Mole Rat. Ah, oh, that's right. There's a kid named Mole Rat. That's true. Well, hopefully you can figure out by how I'm ranking all these other characters where I would put that character on the list. I don't know much about them, so I, I couldn't say where I would put them. Uh, Lot. Lot is an interesting character. Got a decent enough quest. I don't think I would put you in Meat Shield territory because you do have a bit more development, Lot. You've got your recruitment quest, your basic quest. You do try to expand the world a bit. You try to show that the, the frontier, the world of Portland, Oregon, has some slavery, but you're like the only example of slavery being normalized. Like You're trying to do a lot of a lot of world building by yourself, and it doesn't quite work out because you're doing it by yourself. I'll give you some props for trying, but yeah. When I was doing my Legion Companion run, I didn't really feel the need to bring a lot. I'm pretty sure I looked into the Gek files, and I don't think you have a whole lot to say about the world. If it weren't for your recruitment quest, you'd probably be Meat Shield territory. But because you do have that, I'll put you in C tier. This robot, Lapin, L-A-P-N. Um... A fun character. I like him, you know, and uh, pretty powerful, too. Being able to blow up enemies is very amusing. So I liked traveling with Lappin, but doesn't really talk, doesn't have anything to say. Um, beyond the utility of watching him kill things, there's not much to him. And being able to put him in your pocket occasionally, that's nice. It's it's nice when you're in combat to have Lappin, but outside of that, there's just not a whole lot. And uh, Skitters? I We didn't showcase Skitters very much on the channel, and... Uh, it's because there wasn't a whole lot to Skitters. You get a, a small recruitment quest, but again, doesn't talk a whole lot. The the memes are S tier, I would say. The If you're in the Frontier Discord, they're always talking about Skitters. But as a companion in the Frontier, I playtested the Frontier a bit with Skitters as a companion, and I never felt like she was doing a whole lot. She has a perk where she draws aggro, but then she gets shot and dies, or at least is rendered non-functional for combat like when it comes to utility lapin offers more util more utility than skitters who just goes into battle and then immediately dies is buddy chicken on the list oh no i, I don't have buddy chicken on the list that is true <laughs> it's a less colorful buddy chicken because of the joy that it brings to the world for zach's sake i would probably put buddy chicken at least c tier but i don't think it i didn't think it was fair to rate buddy chicken because buddy chicken is not really a companion buddy chicken is just bliss just like a pocket full of bliss you pull him out you smile you put him back in your pocket really does buddy chicken do anything in combat no not really he's good company but no uh the hanged man we did not showcase the hanged man on the channel the hanged man is yet another character that does not speak much like christine i do not give very high regard to characters that don't say anything it, again you can have mute characters in video games but christine was not done well and I don't believe the Hanged Man was either. His character is amusing enough from what I saw in the dialogue subtitles, of course, because he doesn't speak. But he doesn't have a whole lot of plot relevance. Like, uh, he is kind of tied into the NCR's, you know, the Frontier's version of Bitter Springs. He was there. He doesn't do much beyond... There's a different quest that we did early on in the NCR campaign. where We, we basically saw ev everything that he was trying to bring to the table. Like, we saw... Another soldier's remorse over the sadness of the Frontier's equivalent of Bitter Springs. I think it was called Sandlot. Like, I was there at Sandlot. It was horrible. It's like, yeah, we already did that quest. Like, And this guy is hard to find, too. He's on a bridge somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Meet you territory for me. So Scraps, I think, is one of the few characters that I would put in S tier. 
And if you saw my review of the Frontier or my Legion playthrough of the Frontier, you might understand why I think he's so good. He's a very unique character. He's got a lot to say. He's got barks for a couple different places in the Frontier. Like, I brought him into a bar, and he's like, Hey, how about that barmaid? I know her by name. Her name is this, and she does this. He's got a lot. He interacts with the world a lot. I would say if you're doing a Legion run of the Frontier, picking him up is almost mandatory because of how much he adds to the story. He's not only a great character in his own right, like a lot of these characters, a lot of these A-tier characters, if you're doing a Legion run, he's basically mandatory. You really gotta pick him up. You're missing out if you don't bring him with you. He's a reflection of the Legion campaign's dilemma, where it's like, do we stick to the old ways, or do we embrace like reform ways and embrace these new technologies? And he is technology. He is a robot, but in a bit of a juxtaposition, he wants to be a Legionary. So do we, do we allow him to be a Legionary? Do we break old traditions and norms and allow this robot to be a Legionary? And does he set aside his old loyalties to robot kind and embrace the Legion? Is he able to do that? Like, he's got a loyalty quest. And, and it's really good because he has to make a difficult decision. And depending on how you resolve his loyalty quest and how you end the game, like whose faction you're siding with, he has a lot of different endings. Like, there's a lot going for this character. They use Scraps to flesh out the shitty villain boss. <laughs> Scraps is an amazing character. He's got a lot of charisma like uh, Joshua Graham, I would say. He's got a great loyalty quest, and he's really intricately woven into the Frontier story. Like, he's got so much going for him. I'd say we need a lot more characters like Scraps. Sandlot was Wrench's thing. Ah, oh, I'm misremembering. That's right. Thank you, Divya. Sandlot was Wrench's thing. Speaking of Wrench, uh, I'd say Wrench is, a, Wrench is a solid companion, you know? She definitely fulfills the requirements for being Meat Shield. But uh, she's got so much going for her. She's tied into the Enclave in the Frontier. And a lot of people, a lot of people in the, the Fallout community only know the Frontier's opinions on the Enclave by way of that screenshot that was circulating where the Enclave is nothing but a bunch of mindless heathens, a bunch, a bunch of fascists. And like, a lot of people did not take that the right way. But if you actually played the mod and you met Wrench and you talked to her, you see that... The Frontier actually did more for the Legion than almost anyone else. Like, what Arcade did for the Enclave in Fallout New Vegas, Wrench does for the Enclave in the Frontier. She sings highly of them. She talks about how before you even arrived at the Frontier, the Enclave were here trying to do what you were trying to do, trying to bring law and order and all the struggles they had. And she, she showcases the Enclave in a sympathetic light. And she's got a loyalty quest where she meets another member of the Enclave who was basically given up. And it's a really well done loyalty quest. Her voice actor does a lot of great stuff. Her voice actor does a, a lot of great line deliveries. She made me bust out laughing quite a lot. I brought her to the Crusaders and she got up all in my face and started yelling at me. And then I recruited, I brought her to the Legion territory and she started yelling at me because she hates the Legion. Like she's got a lot going for her. I would definitely say A tier. She's got a couple of things holding her back, of course. I don't I don't much care for the dog that she brings with her. I could take her to leave it. Not really a asset or a detriment. Kind of a repetitive bark. She, she could have used more barks, honestly. I kept hearing her say the same thing in combat. And, uh, of course, the Enclave themselves are not really well fleshed out inside of the Frontier. You know, outside of the space station they have. Uh, the Enclave were better developed maybe i could see putting wrench into s tier but i i can't like, if you're doing an ncr run of the frontier like, she's probably the best companion to have because she hates the crusaders she hates the legion she's decent enough with the ncr and she's probably the best ncr companion one more reason that keeps wrench out of s tier that i forgot to mention is that she's really hard to find i can't fault people for not knowing about wrench and her her positive views on the Enclave because she is tucked away under a pile of scrap metal in the middle of nowhere. She's not in a big city. She's in a small building that's unmarked in the middle of nowhere. I, I, I sought her out and I had difficulty finding her. I had to consult the wiki and other guides to find her. So that's a bit of a design flaw. Boone gets a bit more of a blessing because people know about Boone because they can find Boone and a lot of people have met Boone. Not a whole lot of people can meet Wrench if they don't know where she is. Not a whole lot of people can develop positive feelings for Wrench if they never meet her. 
should have been a quest marker for it. Yeah, if some if a random townie mentioned wrench and then it got added to your quest log, like a random unmarked quest or something like that, that would have been nice. But I don't think there's anything that in game directs you to her location. This girl, uh, America, America from the Frontier mod, the last Frontier companion we have. So a lot of people only know about America by way of what they've seen circulating online. They know about the enslavement, my little girl thing, and they know a lot of people think that she's got foot fetishy things because of a screenshot that circulated. It's a lot of that was overblown. Some of it wasn't, some of it was problematic, but some of it was overblown. Um, I'd say Scraps is absolutely essential if you're doing a Legion run. America as a Crusader companion, maybe not as essential. I don't think she's awful, but yeah, she gives you a big old lore dump. She comes up to you and says, I have trauma, and she explains in exquisite detail all about it. Not the best introduction. If you're doing a run of the Crusaders in the Frontier, she's got a lot to say. You, you bring her with you on some of the, the Crusaders side quests, and she actually does comment on some of the things you do. Like, I, I remember I walked up to a, a shopkeep, and I bullied him until he gave me what I wanted, and she's like, well, that was kind of mean what you did to him. Like, she actually reacts to the world, and I appreciate that. She's got a lot of fun random barks. And she does interact with the world. And if you're doing a run of the, of the Frontiers Crusader quest line, she's fine to bring along. And now the rest of these characters that have all been added by various mods. A lot of these familiar faces. Some of them maybe not as much familiar. So Billy the Robot, Billy the Killbot, definitely has a, a lot of utility. Is very aggressive. And he's got quite the personality on him. He's definitely not meat shield territory. I would put him at least at C tier because he's got a lot of fun voice. He's made us laugh quite a lot. He's got a lot of charisma. And he does have quite a few barks around the world. Like, I, he's not even C tier. He, he actually has gotten quite a few upgrades. When we first recruited Billy, I'd say he might be Meat Shield territory. But the mod author has actually gone back and he's got a new model. You have a, a unique model, more voice lines. No loyalty quest just yet, but he's got a lot of charisma and he makes you laugh. And he's he's got a lot of things to say. You bring him to Good Springs, he's like, oh, we're in Good Springs. Look at that farmer. Hey, hey, Pete, your wife got fucked. It's like, he's got a lot of things to yell. He's almost A tier with how much charisma he's got. But uh, I, I'd say he's at least firmly in B tier. He's good. He's gotten a lot better as we've used him. And uh, yeah, occasionally I like to pick him up and travel with him because he's fun. Dibya, you say that even base Billy had enough jokes to be C tier? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough, sure. He's got a reference to me and Zach. I, I'm not gonna put him in S tier for nepotism. Like you, you can make jokes about us and everything. You can reference us, and I'm gonna appreciate it. But I'm, I'm trying to be an analytical here and trying to rank these characters objectively. Sorry, no bonus points for that. Although it is pretty awesome. Speaking of characters that reference us, Stimpak, a lot of charisma. Definitely not uh, meat shield territory because. Uh, Stimpak had a lot of fun lines when we had her, when we traveled with her for her, her quest. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think Stimpak gets to leave C tier because once you've done her quest, that's kind of it. You bring Stimpak along for her loyalty quest. You recruit her, you do her quest, and then that's kind of it. Like You, you want to do her quest, but she doesn't have a whole lot to say. And I wanted there to be more. I went into the GEC and I looked around for more content. And she had some scripted lines, so, some programmed lines of dialogue to say, but a lot of it was unvoiced. There's a lot of cut content for Stimpak, unfortunately. And in the same way, Andrea is a lot like Stimpak. She was a fun companion. I think we showcased a lot of what she had to go, uh, what, what she had going on. She's a great companion. You travel with her for her quest. You know, you recruit her at the Boomers. I, I guess she is the Boomer companion, really, because there is no Boomer companion. So if you want a Boomer companion, then she's a great candidate. She's got a really fun quest, and uh, yeah, I don't think she has a whole lot of dialogue around the world, though. I, I don't think she has like a lot of things, a lot of things to say about like the Mojave Outpost or anything. Like you bring her with you, you do her quest, you have fun with her, you laugh, and then you move on. <laughs> yes, that is Andrea, not Hope. Sorry. Yes, Hope is right here. We got Hope, and yeah, she's uh, she's actually a human because <laughs> some people forget. Now, we only made her a robot for our series. She is just kind of a normal person in the in the game. So she's not uh, super crazy or anything, but she's got a great quest. She's got a lot of charisma, a lot of positivity. Again, a great quest. I had a lot of fun with that. 
And she's got a lot of barks about the world. She has a lot to say. You bring her to various locations and she's got a lot of things to say. So I think she might actually break into A tier. I know we joke a lot about her. Were dinosaurs a pre-war thing or a pre-pre-war thing? She says that line a lot, but, but that's just because she wants to say a lot. But we keep her in Novak, so all she says is the Novak line. She has a lot of things she wants to say. She has a lot of charisma. As far as modded companions go, she's pretty high up there. If she were, if she was more of a unique character, I could definitely see her being more firmly in A tier. I think maybe I'm just going to be generous. This might be a bit of uh, nostalgia talking because she was the first companion that we recruited in our series. We got her back in episode, what, three? We've been traveling with Hope since 2016. <laughs> so maybe there's a bit of a nostalgic fondness. Maybe she should belong in B tier. But I'm going to put her in A tier. And I, I just love her positivity. That's, it's just, it, does, it does so much for me. The, the Wasteland definitely needs a lot more positivity. Um, so this character is Titus. You may have seen him in the Legion run that I have been doing. He was um, in the last few episodes. But uh, he's not F tier. He's got utility. But beyond the utility, he doesn't offer much. You do his quest. And even his quest to recruit him isn't really about him. He gives you a quest. You go do his quest. You come back, and he offers to join you. you know, and he's properly voiced, which is nice, but he doesn't have a whole lot to say. He's basically a meat shield that I'm traveling with right now, unfortunately. When it comes to Legion companions that are worth traveling with, uh, this guy right here, I, what's his name? Is it Achilles? I think this guy's name is Achilles. He's from the Caesar's New Regime mod, I believe. He's got a lot to say. He's got a lot of charisma. Maybe not um, Joshua Graham levels of charisma, but he's got a lot to say. I think he's a great selection if you want a Legion companion. Perhaps one of the best. I don't know if I used him enough. I don't think he had a whole lot to say on the world. Like when I brought him to various locations, I don't remember him saying a whole lot about them. If he had comments on the world, I probably would put him in B tier. But I think you recruit him and you talk to him and he's got a lot to say. He's got a lot of interesting opinions, but... Yeah, he, he's just kind of C-tier because beyond that, he doesn't do a whole lot. And Adelphus, I believe, is in the same camp as Titus. He uh, He's a guy that you can mod into your game. He gives you a quest. You go do it. You come back. And uh, then he joins your team. And he's got some things to say about the Legion. He talks about Mara's worship. He's uh, decently voiced and everything. But he's basically like a, a standard Legion companion, kind of like Titus. Well-voiced. But not a whole lot to say. Not a whole lot of insight. I don't think he has anything to say about the world because I brought him to a couple different locations. And I didn't hear him say anything about the locations. But yeah, if he had more to say, I would have liked to put him higher. But unfortunately, I think he just gets stuck in meat shield territory. Bad motherfucker. Uh, we all love bad motherfucker. We love him for the memes. We love him. He, I mean, he's great in combat. Make no mistake. He's not much of a conversationalist. You, you go through his string of dialogue and he's... He gets some laughs out of you. He's definitely got enough charisma to break out of Meat Shield territory. Don't worry. I'm not leaving him in Meat Shield territory. He definitely has a simplistic and surprising amount of charisma. We haven't spent a lot of time with Bad Motherfucker, but a lot of people remember him. He is very memorable. And he is... He does actually have some kind of world interactions because he's from uh, the Some Guy 2000 quest mod series. And a lot of the characters... Well, not a lot, but... Occasionally, when you're doing the New Vegas Bounties mods, they'll make references to Bad Motherfucker. So he's he's kind of tied into those mods. He's he's got more to him than a standard meat shield. He's got he's got some things going for him. He's definitely got a lot of utility. He's got the smash perk. He's he's got stuff. He's got charisma. He releases a thunderous fart. He <laughs> so much about him is memorable. He is a bit of a meme companion. He, he's solid. He is a decent companion. I'll put, you next, I'll put you next to Lily, you know. Two super mutant companions that I want to spend more time with, but once you spend an hour or two with them, you you kind of seen everything there is to see. He belongs in a tier on his own. <laughs> Triple S tier. Uh, so this guy, I believe, Desmond, I believe, from the Initiation Quest line. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't fault you if you don't remember him. He dies halfway through that quest. He's got a lot to say, you know. He, he's a very interesting companion, but... Yeah, he, he kind of dies in the, in the first hour of the mod. There's not much to him beyond that. Uh, I might be generous and put him in C tier because he does have a fair amount of charisma. He, he does have things to say. You talk to him and he's well-voiced. And for the brief amount of time you spend with him, 
he's a fun companion, and when you have to part ways with him, you're scrambling to look for, oh man, how did I screw it up? Did I fail a speech check? How do I keep Desmond alive? But you can't. Like, he, he just dies during that mod, and it's kind of sad that you can't save him. You want to save him. I think the fact that I wanted to keep him alive, yeah, that, that means he's no longer Meat Shield territory. All these characters in Meat Shield territory, they can live or die, and I wouldn't care one way or the other, but I kind of wanted to keep Desmond alive. And it was kind of sad where I, when I couldn't, so. Yep, C-tier. From the Inheritance. Yeah, from Bradley is from the... I keep calling him Desmond, that's right. His name is Bradley. That's, and that's why he's not in a higher tier, because I forgot his name was Bradley and not Desmond. Desmond is a different guy. Right, 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 right. Desmond is this guy! Desmond! Desmond, you've got a decent quest, but yeah, you're, you're also going to be in C tier, I think, because you're, you're just kind of a forgettable guy. Your, your whole shtick is that you're a bloke, you're, you're kind of mumbly, don't have all, you honestly don't have a whole lot of charisma, but you had a pretty fun quest, we had a fun time traveling with you, I'll put you in C territory. I like you that much, I put you in C. Is his name Desmond? I, I hope his name is Desmond. Oh, I hope I'm not getting his name wrong too. So we got Delilah. Delilah, you had a fun quest with the other optional mod on. You had a decent enough voice. We had a lot of fun with you, but after we were done with your quest, we didn't really feel the need to keep traveling with you because I don't think you have a whole lot to say about the world. Also, your, your quest involved a lot of vanilla characters and you didn't give them voices, so they were silent. I have to penalize you for that because I don't, much care for uh, characters who don't have voice lines. Sorry. If one of these guys is Desmond, I'll find him. Which one of you is Desmond? So Joshua, not Joshua Graham, but Joshua from New World Parliament. Kind of like Desmond, you know. Desmond is, is a, kind of a soft-spoken guy, little little mumbly. He, it, ro he's roughly the same tier, I would say. But I also want to put him one tier higher because if you think about it, he's got four... Loyalty quests. In my mind, the New World Parliament series of mods, New World Parliaments 1 through 4, they heavily involve Joshua, so Joshua basically has four loyalty quests, and that's kind of insane. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bump you up to B tier. That's crazy. I had a lot of fun traveling with Joshua. I have a lot of, a lot of fun memories of traveling with Joshua, so I'll put you in B tier. Uh, so, this skeleton... Mary Jo Casey, I believe, was her name. She is a great concept for a character. Like, you see these trauma harnesses in Old World Blues, and that's haunting. And then you can actually talk to one, speaking to you through some kind of voice modulator. That's a great concept. Like, the concept alone gets you out of Meat Shield territory. I really enjoy this character concept. And uh, by default, this modded character is placed in Old World Blues. And considering how much of a disappointment Roxy is... Yeah, you're a great character. You are a great selection. You are a great choice if you want a companion for traveling old world blues. Like, I almost want to put you in B tier for that alone. Like, you fit thematically so well. It's really kind of nuts how good that is. But I don't think you actually have a whole lot to say about the locations in old world blues. Like, if you had opinions on the think tank and uh, all the other characters and locations in that world, I'd put you up higher. But yeah, you're, you're just kind of forgettable. I mean, you're not forgettable because you're kind of haunting and scary and you scarred me for life, but like that's, that's what gets you out of Meat Shield territory, is being an, a great character concept that I wish there was more to. So, Niner, you got a fun loyalty quest. You're very memorable. I think you, you might have quite a lot to say on the world. I think you do have occasionally a few barks. I might be putting you a bit too low. You might belong in B territory because I think you do have a couple of barks. When Zach and I played through our series and we had Niner, we were kind of mean-spirited to the guy. I always feel bad about that. Like, if there was a couple things I could change about our series, I think we... I would have liked to be less mean to Niner. Just kind of felt unfair. A lot of people have fond memories of Niner because he's one of the earliest modded characters in the game. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of a relevance to the story. He's not tied in like some of these other characters. He's just kind of a junkie in New Vegas, and that's kind of his shtick. Well, he's got some fun lines, and he's got a decent enough loyalty quest, and I'm willing to put him in the C tier. Uh, Russell. Russell's a pretty good character, I would say. Russell's got his own quests. The Some Guy 2000 did uh, the Russell mod. You're kind of a grizzled mercenary, kind of cliche character, but you've got a really great loyalty quest. Like, 
is that loyalty quest good enough to put you in the B tier? Maybe not by itself, but you get a lot of character. You're you're you you're well voiced. Like, uh, yeah, you're decent, I think. Like, oh man, it's hard to say. You're straddling the line between B and C at this point. I'll put you in B tier for now. Like, you're you're pretty good. You're pretty solid. All right. Uh, I think you. I think the reason that I'm going to put you in B tier and not drop you down is because I think when I brought you with me when I was doing some of uh, the New Vegas bounties too, you actually did comment on that. Like, you got some interactivity with other some guy mods. Um, it's a bit disappointing that I can't bring you with me to New Vegas Bounties 3 and we can finally exact our revenge on Glanton together. That's unfortunate. I almost want to put you in C tier for that alone, but no, you're a decently well-made character. You've got a lot of development and, uh, yeah, you're solid. You're fine. Rusty? Rusty the Talking Teddy Bear. I think that you get out of Meat Shield territory for being just a great concept for a character. We brought you along really early on, and you've got some fun lines. You've made us chuckle a few times. I wanted there to be more to this character, but aside from two or three voice lines that made us laugh, once you've traveled with you for about an hour, again, you've basically seen all there is to see with Rusty. No loyalty quest, no, no, not a whole lot to say about the world, not really tied into it. You're kind of like a, a joke, almost a meme character, like bad motherfucker. So I put you right next to him. You're fun for a bit, and then we moved on. So the Storyteller Companion is quite unique. We have not showcased the Storyteller Companion in any way on the channel because I'm not sure how we, we would be able to do that in the best possible way. For those that haven't traveled with the Storyteller Companion, you put books into him. You, you give him books that aren't burned. If you find some books in the wasteland that aren't burned, you give them to him. And if he likes the book, he'll tell you a story. And by tell you a story, I mean he will basically play a YouTube video on your screen. So he'll, bas he'll give you a big old 10-minute lore dump occasionally at your request. He, he does something that's so unique, I think I'm actually going to put him in B tier. Like, I don't know how he would fit you on the channel because, like, there would be just 10 or 15 minute segments where you're just telling a story. But you do something so unique that no other companion does, and I didn't hate the time I traveled with you. Although I don't know if I could have skipped your stories. If you're telling me a boring story, I think I may have tried to skip it and it wasn't skippable. But uh, just for being such a unique character, I put you in B tier. You kind of wish he was stationed at a library and you help him set up like that one Novak mod. That's true. Maybe he belongs more in C tier, although there's already C tier is already getting kind of crowded. <laughs> I'll put you in B tier and that might be being generous. I'm not sure you have a whole lot to say about the rest of the world because I did not bring you with me around the map all that much. What little I, what, what little time I did spend with you, you were pretty quiet except when I chose to talk to you and then you wouldn't stop talking. But just for being such a unique character in the sense that you play basically YouTube videos on demand, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you in B tier. It's unique. No one else does that. We got Vanessa here. Vanessa is actually a character from Fallout 3. She was uh, in, a, a modded character in Fallout 3, which is kind of unique. And she's got a really, really, really fun loyalty quest. She's a cowgirl. She drinks a lot. She's basically Cass, but different. And I think like she tries to tell you that she is Cass's sister. I didn't hate her. I spent a fair amount of time as Legion Mike with her, and I had a lot of fun with her. I don't think she adds a lot to the rest of the world, and she's not really tied into the world of New Vegas as a whole. She was fun for the quest that I brought her on, and I'm glad I did it, but I didn't really see the need to bring her beyond that, which is why I kind of killed her off screen in the series. She's like cats but hornier. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's true. You can have sex with Vanessa, which is a positive... Or a negative, depending on how you want to look at it. Maybe maybe that gets your goat. Maybe that's cringe for you. But it's an option, you know. It's an option. It's there if you want it, but you don't need to have it. Wait, do you need... Actually, that might be like an unskippable part of her quest line. <laughs> maybe, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't rank her so highly. I don't remember that. Uh, so, Valius. Valius is a trans man in the Legion, which is such a crazy out there concept. I can't help but love it. Like... I wish there were more to this character because that premise alone is way out there. I wish I could spend more time with Valius and hear what he has to say about the Legion. And I want to know about the backstory about how they found out about your backstory and then they ambushed you and like you had to kill them and now you're stuck serving the Legion, but like they, they'll never accept you as you are. Like you're a crazy concept for a character and I 
kind of wanted to spend more time with you, but you were underdeveloped, unfortunately. Like, it's a great character, aside from the, the quest where you recruit him, and then he gives you his backstory, and then that's it. That's just kind of the end of the character. And then there's Vincent Vincent. Uh, so much character that almost is fitting of B tier, but you don't have a loyalty quest. I don't think you have a whole lot to say on the world as a whole. On, on world as a whole. I think you get stuck in the C tier just because you don't really have anything to say about the world. And you don't have a loyalty quest. You fit in thematically. Like, you feel like you're worthy of being in the, in the vanilla game. But, uh, yeah. I wish I could say more about Vincent. I wish Vincent had a quest. And I wish that he had more to say about the world. And we can bring him to various locations. He is a companion that you can bring with you. And he'll make you laugh quite a lot. And it's almost worthy of, of B tier because of how much we've laughed with him. But a little underdeveloped. Not a whole lot to add to the world. Not really tied into the world as a whole. He's great. I like him. But yeah. I'm just going to leave him in C tier for now. He's never annoying. That's true. That's true. Like, th does Vincent belong with these other, like, meme characters and characters that are charismatic, but... Not really much beyond that. No, I would say Vincent. Yeah, I'd say Vincent's roughly the same as Niner, though. They're fair additions to the world, but they're not really tied into the story in any significant way. They make you laugh. That You have some good times with them, but then you move on because they don't have anything else to say. So here we got Eliza. Now, Eliza has a fun quest that you bring her on. I don't know if the quest really revolves around her all that much. I think Eliza has a lot to say, though. Much like Hope, you bring Eliza to different locations, and she has a lot to say. Like, she's got a lot of barks. She has made us laugh quite a few times. Whenever you bring her to Good Spring, she's got a new line to say. You bring her to Novak, she's got a new line to say, or three new lines to say. She's, she's very talkative. I don't think she's got a great personal quest, though, and she's not really a standout character in any real way, but I don't really get tired of traveling with her, or at least I haven't gotten tired of traveling with her yet. Much like with Hope, she's just got so much to say that she she sticks with me. She stays around. And then we've got Vanessa. No, not Vanessa, excuse me. We've got Willow. Willow is the final modded companion I got here. I thought about putting her in S tier just because she's got so much to say. Like, much like Hope and Eliza, Willow's got a lot to say. You bring her to different locations and she's got a lot to say. And she's the only companion on this list you can really romance. Like, yeah, you can have sex with Vanessa and you can, like, have sex with that motherfucker. And you can flirt with some characters, but you can romance Willow, which, take it or leave it, she does something that no other character on this list really does. If you want to romance a character, Willow is basically one of the only options in New Vegas. She's got a pretty fun quest. She, uh, you travel with her and you go meet that ghoul with the wig and she comments on that. She has that hidden collector quest, so the, the quest where you go look for blue star bottle caps actually has a bit more development. We brought her to um, the Thorn, and she was making these snide, sassy, rude comments towards Red Lucy. It was fun, really added a whole new angle to it. Like, she's great. Willow is up there. Willow is definitely A tier. I, again, almost enough to put you in S tier, but... Yeah, you're kind of a forgettable character archetype. You're just a girl that's out there, and uh, you got a backstory and everything. It's fine, but like, you don't stand out like a robot legionary or, you know, some of these other characters. Like, you're 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 fair. You're you're a solid A character, much alongside Hope. I, I don't think I would, if I travel with Hope and Willow, I would always be hearing fun things. I feel like they always have a lot to say. And honestly, Eliza too. Like, if Eliza had a better quest. I think I'd put her in A tier too. I want to put her in A tier. She's fun. But I, I, unfortunately, I have to put her in B tier for now. That is something else that Willow has going for her is that they try to make her interact with the vanilla companions, which is difficult to do because they have limited voice lines to work with. But Willow will talk to Veronica and be like, hey, Veronica, I noticed you're dressed like a potato today. What's up with that? <laughs> it's like, come on, that, that's it's mean spirited, but it's cool to see you interacting. She'll, she'll talk to characters. Hey, boo, why the dour face? My wife is dead. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Like, Willow's good. Willow's up there. And then there's Zach. I mean, I've been traveling with this guy for, what, seven, eight years now? And he's always got something new to say. He might not be tied into the story in any 
meaningful way, but the fact that I've, I've never, I have, I've been traveling with them for eight years and I haven't gotten tired of it yet. So unfortunately you got some company scraps. You don't get to dominate S tier by yourself. Zach's up there with you straight to S or F. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, he goes in F for friend. F is friend tier. Ah, oh, but then why is rocks here? Nah, you, you get S tier. You get S tier. Oh, there's Axeman. That's right. I forgot about Axeman. I knew I was going to forget about a few. Where would I put Axeman on this list? The thing is, it's difficult to figure out where to put Axeman because there's two different Axeman mods. So which Axeman, which Axeman do I put on the list? We can get this done. We, we can rectify the situation. I can't believe I forgot about Axeman. There we go. Axeman. So Axeman has two different mods. He's added by two different mods, which is why when you saw us in New Vegas in our series, there was two different Axemans. It's difficult to judge that. Like, the original Axeman quest with the road fuckers, it, it had some interesting aspects, and Axeman had some character development. He's definitely a character. The, uh, the, subs the, the second Axeman quest that we played was a bit shorter, I think if we're doing the Roadfuckers version of Axeman, the, the original one we played with, the quest itself that we did, his loyalty quest, was so well done that it would probably be B tier. Once you've done his loyalty quest, though, there isn't much to him, and he's, I don't think he's got a lot to say on the world. He's definitely got a lot of character, a lot of charisma, kind of unique. The original quest that we did to, to recruit him was cool, and there's a couple different endings to that, too. Like, I think if you... You can end that quest with him being pissed at you and actually he, you have to like, kill him, I think. I, I think that version of Axeman is no longer publicly available. And there's a different version of Axeman, which is a bit shorter of a, a quest to recruit you. Uh, it's still Axeman, but different. You know, it, it, It's a fun character concept. Uh, kind of up there with some of the other main characters, though. Like it, It's a short recruitment quest and that you're, you're kind of fun for a bit. But once we've traveled with you for a bit, that's kind of the whole of your character. So, oh my gosh, Dino Jackson. I am forgetting so many of them. How could I forget? Don't worry, we'll get him. Uh, Dino Jackson. So he is, he is kind of a recurring character this, from, the, um, from the American Weirdo series. As a character, he's got a pretty fun loyalty quest. I, again, I don't think he has a lot to say on the rest of the world as a whole. I think once you've done his loyalty quest, once you've done his quest with him, then you're kind of done. Um, yeah, solidly in C tier. Had a lot of fun with him. We brought him back for a couple of gags. It was fun to see him again when he showed up again in a couple of the other Madman quests by American Weirdo. It's kind of like an old friend. Like, I kind of want to put him in B tier because some when I, whenever I see him in a in a one of American Weirdo's quests, it's like I'm seeing an old friend again. And it's like, oh, it's you again. What have you been up to? Uh, I've been working on the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. Alvin, yeah, it, it's, it's great. I have a lot of fun with Dino Jackson. I like to see Donald Jackson, and if you had more going on, if like if you had more quests, if you were in, if you, if you were in more things, I'd put you up in B tier. Like I I like spending time with you. I better stop now before I put every single companion that's ever existed on this tier list. But Mercury the companion, we traveled with uh, Mercury by Seddon, uh, had a fun loyalty quest. Made us laugh a few times in C tier. A lot of companions are in C tier because you you download them, you have fun with them for an hour, and then you move on. And I think anyone that you can spend more than an hour or two with and have a lot of fun with is in a higher tier. And anyone you get bored with after 10, 15 minutes is probably down here in Meat Shield territory. So if there's a companion here that I haven't placed on the list, you can kind of infer from that where they would go. Eve! Oh my gosh, I I feel so mean. I can't believe I forgot about Eve. Again, we had a lot of fun with Eve for a loyalty quest. I ooh, I kind of want to put her in B tier because she does have a bit more interaction. Like, okay, she's she's got a fair amount going for her. She's a very unique character, half Deathclaw. You know, it's 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 unique. It it might be a bit silly, a bit uh, juvenile, but it, it's fun and it's unique. She's got a, a fine voice. She's got a, a decent enough quest to go on. She has interactivity with the, um, the other Riku Riku quest that we did recently. Like, I almost want to put her in B tier. She's like, she's she's up there. You know, C tier is looking a little crowded. I think it's time we bump some people into B tier. So characters in C tier that have made us laugh and we've had a lot of fun traveling with and I, I want to travel again with. Yeah, we'll put Vincent and Eve up there. 
There's some characters I kind of want to bump up right now. I think this is a fair assessment, though. It's kind of a bell curve. We got, we've got a lot of companions in C tier. Some of them are better developed and can escape into the higher tiers. And uh, some of them would benefit from a, a bit more time in the oven, to be kind. And also, you could actually have done something with Roxy. Like, Ro Roxy needs a, a, a lot more love. <laughs> Balls the talk. Ah, uh, yes. Another companion worthy of C tier. You, you have fun with them. They make you laugh. You do their quests. And then I forgot to put them on the tier list because that's kind of all you do with them. You say Joshua is now A tier then. <laughs> I could. I could bump him up. I, I'd say if Joshua had a bit more enthusiasm or a bit more of a tie-in to the series, to the, the story of New Vegas, then uh, yeah, he, he'd probably be up there in A or S tier. Joshua stays in B tier for being British. Is it B for British? Yes, <laughs> sure. Dibia, you say that Tales of Nerino has a solid string of C tier at best companions. <laughs> Okay, well, once we eventually get around to Tales of the Reno, I, I'll have to make that evaluation for myself. Who knows? Maybe some of them are fun enough and unique enough to break into B tier. Who knows? You say Arcade feels like he ties into the main story most out of all companions in the base game. Well, he ties into the front... He ties into the, the Fallout series. He ties into the Enclave faction, but the Enclave faction doesn't really have any relevance into the New Vegas storyline. Like, the Enclave is wholly disconnected from New Vegas. It's not tied to the Legion or and barely tied to the NCR. So maybe if he were a, a Brotherhood campaign, I'd, I'd say Veronica probably holds that title because title, the Brotherhood is a bit more of a significant faction. Every, every major faction wants you to deal with the Brotherhood. So yeah, you, you definitely benefit from having Veronica if you're doing stuff with the Brotherhood. She, she lets you into the bunker for free. That's another point in utility's favor. Like, if there were a vanilla companion that would break into S tier, I would say it would be, it would probably be Veronica in my opinion. And Felicia Day does such a good job voice here too. It, it's hard to not like her. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it. I am quite content with how things have shaken out. I think everyone is roughly in the spot where they deserve to be. Maybe some of them are a little underrated. Maybe some of them are a little overrated, but yeah. You say a lot of the low-tier human companions could be bumped up a tier if I could smooch over romance. <laughs> yeah. Again, I put Willow in A tier because, like, well, for a lot of reasons. Like, one thing I didn't mention is that Willow will remember how long you've been traveling with her. So if you talk to her after 30 days, she goes, Hey, buddy, guess what? We've been traveling together for 30 days. And if you romance her, she's like, I can't believe I've been traveling with the love of my life. She, she'll, she'll say a lot. She'll surprise you. She will surprise you with how much she keeps track of and how much she has to say. In addition to what Hope does of having comments on different things in the world. All right, fine. Bad motherfucker goes into S tier and that's what we're going to call it. All right, that's the end of the tier list, everybody.